Okay, you all have been very patient. Let, we're moving into confirmation. And what I want to do is tell you a little bit about what's going to happen. First of all, why, why do I wear all this stuff? I wear, it's called a coat, because it is a symbol of my authority as a bishop. It's not just sort of flashy haberdasher. <laughs> and notice even today when we're talking about angels, it's pointing because that's, what's in, that's what the design is on the coat, because I really do believe it's meant to say Christians really are surrounded by the presence and power of his angels. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the miter on, that funny shaped hat that goes straight up like this. Um, it's shaped like that because it's meant to symbolize a flame, which is the presence of the Spirit. As you rightly said, we're in red today for a reason. The other thing I want to show you is this. This is uh, my cross as a bishop. And I want you to notice, it's a cross, but what's the, what's the shape? It's a circle. And it means the cross for the whole world. Because we are a part of a global Anglican communion. You have brothers and sisters in Karachi and Nairobi and in London and in Pretoria, South Africa and Singapore, literally all over the world. And you can't really see it from up here, but you can look at it later if you like. Right in the center is the shield for the Diocese of Central Florida, because we're a part of this. So I wear all of these things, including the cross and the mitre, to represent the fact that I'm acting as a, not just as the bishop of the Diocese of Central Florida, but as a bishop and a part of an entire global Anglican communion, past, present, and future. So that, for example, see, the chair got brought forward. I'm going to sit. And the reason I sit is because that's the ancient way someone in authority would preside. If you recall, like for example, when Jesus stood before Pilate, what was Pilate doing? He was sitting at the place of the stone, if you recall. And so I sit to represent the fact that I'm acting on behalf of those who have been authority centuries ago. So then the other thing that will happen is, is that we'll go through the questions and answers. And I've explained this to those who are being confirmed. I will do three things. And in the Episcopal Church, choreography and hand motions always have meaning. Um, so what, that, what will happen is, is that each, each person will come forward. And if they can, if they're physically able, they'll kneel. They'll have to, but if they can, that's good. And the reason they do that, it's a way of saying, in front of you and everybody, I'm kneeling, I'm, I'm yielding to the commitments and the promises that I'm making. I'm giving all of who I am to that. And I'm also yielding in submission to being a part of this global church. I'll do three things if they're being confirmed. The first thing I will do is lay my hands on their head, praying for God's protection and care for them. The second thing I'll do is I'll have some oil in this little silver container up there. And I'll make the sign of the cross on their forehead. Oil is always a symbol in the scriptures for the Holy Spirit. So I'm praying for God to touch them with the Holy Spirit and to make the sign of the cross. Just like in baptism, it's like a brand, like branding a cow. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit. In other words, God calls you and claims you as his own. And even though the oil washes off, the, the the, the brand never goes away. And then the third thing I do for those who are being confirmed is this. Little slight slap on the cheek. It doesn't hurt, I promise. And the reason I do that is because you're making a commitment to follow Christ, even if it really gets difficult. And see, Jesus said there'll be times when it's really difficult. Or to use Christian language, in the world you will have tribulation. We don't use that word, but that's what it means. It means there's hardship. And so you're saying, I am willing to stand for Christ and to be his, even if it gets hard and difficult. And the other thing, particularly now, in this global Anglican communion, where we have brothers and sisters in places like Iran and Pakistan and Indonesia and Korea, we have many, many brothers and sister Christians who are suffering specifically because they were followers of Christ. And we're saying we're standing with them. If they're willing to pay the price in Lagos, Nigeria, I'm willing to pay the price in Deland, Florida. It may not be the same. I may not have my goods confiscated. I may not be killed because sometimes that happens. But I'm willing to stand for Jesus regardless. So 
That's what that means. So protection, anointing with God, being claimed, and I'm willing to be his even if it gets tough. Now there's also someone here who is reaffirming. And what that means is she is saying, I'm willing to stand here and reaffirm the commitments that I made a long time ago. Because I'm really in this thing. And so what I will do with her, instead of doing this, because that's already happened, she's been confirmed, I take her hand, like a handshake, like, yeah, you really are one of ours. Don't feel like just because you've been outside of it, or you've been lapsed in some way, you're, you're here. We're welcoming you back. It's, so the handshake, and the other thing I do is put my left hand on her shoulder, because I'm praying prayers of blessing. May the Holy Spirit who's begun a good work in you continue it even to the day of Jesus Christ. So that's what we're going to do. Now we're going to have the screen back on. The candidates are going to be presented. I'm going to sit down. We'll get sort of, it's like a scene change. So we'll get everything ready and then we'll move into confirmation. Move the kneeler to you.